Well, friends, today we're honouring the memory and the witness in particular of St. Lucy, a young Sicilian woman who, at the age of 21, refused very um, aggressive sexual advances by her pagan fiancé, who then, because of that, deemed her to be a Christian, and she was put to death straight away. Um, a violent death, to say the least. And this was obviously a very regular occurrence at that time, particularly under the emperor at the time called Diocletian, who met, meted out extraordinarily harsh violence against Christians at that time. That's why, you know, we'd often see St. Lucy, she's holding her eyes, essentially, in her hand, and a palm of victory over evil, because it was said her eyes were gouged out and her neck was stabbed. Really horrific stuff. That's why, you know, she's rightly so often deemed the, the patron saints of, saint of ailments of the eye or of the throat, particularly cancers of the eye or the throat. Um, she's quite powerful in her intercession and a huge following in Italy, absolutely massive. You see, folks, she was killed because she wanted to remain um, consecrated to Jesus, okay, alone. A crime that is, unfortunately, even to this day, still meted out with very great violence. And in fact, uh, a lot of people don't realize this, but Christianity is the most persecuted faith on the planet today, which is kind of shocking in many respects, but not surprising. It shouldn't be, really. And look, folks, mark my words. What's coming to this country now, it's only going to intensify the mockery of the faith, and especially those who hold fast to the Lord. Because in this perfect, modern, gleaming, pristine modern Ireland, our government, it seems, under pressure from um, the unreasoned mob, seem to want to bring in what's called hate speech laws, which is quite extraordinary. And I can't understand everybody. Why don't people cop on and ask themselves a very simple question when it comes to this type of legislation? When in the history of this world has legislating for people's thoughts when has that ever worked out in countries? I mean, what happens when that stuff comes in? What pops up? Gulags, internment camps, concentration camps, you name it. This is not new, it's old, but it has very great um, consequences. I mean, to make legislation of what somebody else is thinking is quite extraordinary. I mean, for someone to be imprisoned for a crime they have not yet committed, Folks, that only endorses this idea, which turns justice into revenge, that you're now guilty until proven innocent. And it doesn't take a genius to recognize where this is going to lead us. I mean, such legislation, everybody, it seems it could endorse the idea that the catechism of the Catholic Church will be illegal in this country. Uh, and it doesn't take a genius to recognize where that's going to lead us. Now, why am I saying this? To get ready. To get us ready, folks, for it when the time comes to have the guts and the stamina and the faith to stand up to nonsense, unreasoned, totalitarian madness. Um, it will come. In fact, it's here for a lot of people already, as we know, many families who are already split because some follow Christ in a very uh, profound and powerful way, others don't. And Advent obviously is the time where we prepare for Christmas. Um, but folks, we have to remember the Christmas story where the tyrant, King Herod, he sets out to kill the infant Christ. This is not a fairy tale, or is it a children's story? Um, it's a story about the kingdom of heaven breaking out into this world, into this very dark and corrupt and violent kingdoms of this world and its rulers. And they will always resist the new ways of heaven, particularly for those who hold fast to the Lord. They will always do that. There's nothing new about tyrants in this world. Christ is always going to be a threat to the world's way of thinking. And so are those who profess their love and devotion for him. And it's no different today whatsoever. Advent is a time when we should obviously look closer at the Lord, everybody. Move closer to him and watch for prayer and the ways of heaven. And to stand ready, to be alert, and to pray for faith, stamina, hope, and bravery like St. Lucy in the face of evil in this world. Saint Lucy, pray for us.